Hey guys and girls, this is Gordon Overkill with the second episode. In my current Aiden run with our character Gerion, May level 7, Dark Elven Monk. Well, in the comments of the first episode, I was asked uh, if there was something for uh, players who are new to the game, to learn the game a little bit, uh, tutorials I would recommend or anything like that. I don't think there is any very good um, tutorial for the recent versions on YouTube, so I decided that I will try to explain a little more things that um, maybe might be interesting for beginners in this run. So before we really start into the game, let's take a look at different things. First, the skills. I'll just do it as an example for this character. Of course, he doesn't have all the skills there are, but I'll just explain a little bit. Alertness, as I said in the first episode, helps you to dodge bolt spells and to dodge traps. Very useful spells, since traps can do big damage to yourself and your equipment. Bolts can easily kill characters in the later game if they have a tough enemy. Athletics gives an increased chance to... Uh, to, um, to get your physical stats up, strength, dexterity, toughness and appearance, which is very helpful. Also, if you get it to 100, you get a speed boost, which is great too, of course. Climbing helps you to climb out of holes if you fall into, uh, fall into a hole. It helps you to climb mountains and it's also important to reach a specific late game location that you can visit. You, there's no reason for you to do it in any game, but sometimes it can be helpful. Concentration increases your mana regeneration rate. Very important for spellcasters. You have to get it up so you can spam your spells reliably. Also, concentration gives a little bonus to archers. I do not know exactly how that works, but that's the reason why it might be worth increasing for an archer too. For spellcasters, it's an absolute must-have. Increase it early whenever you can. Dodge increases your chance to dodge enemy attacks. You, the higher you get it, the bigger the, the the defensive bonus you get. Of course, it's very nice too, and uh, dodge is very hard to lev to increase later in the game, so it is also useful to put some increases on it early on. Find weakness increases your chance to uh, land critical hits. Very useful. You do a lot more damage. It helps you against those uh, high protection value monsters that you have to fight later on. Nice spell too. A skill too. First aid became very nice in the recent ver in 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 the recent versions, in the latest versions. It was mm, not so useful in the older Adam, but uh, now it uh, it really gives you a lot more hit points practically. You can apply this skill whenever you suffer any kind of damage. And if you're good at it, you will reliably uh, regenerate quite a lot of hit points. It's not bad, especially for characters with uh, without the healing skill. It can be very, very helpful to stay alive. You can, for example, if you get poisoned, you can apply healing, uh, first aid, after every time you get poison damage, and thus reduce a lot of the damage you, uh, you have to suffer. Haggling gets you better prices in the shops. Not very useful. In the end, you get all the gold you need. You don't really need that. And if you're bad at the skill, you, the prices might even get worse. I would not increase that. Healing increases your health regeneration rate. Not bad, of course. Later in the game you won't need it because you have healing herbs or uh, stuff like that. Listening mm, gives you some information about the particular dungeon level you are on. There is actually no need to increase this skill because you will uh, automatically increase it by training, uh, by just walking through the dungeons. No need to put any increases on that. Literacy increases your chance to successfully read scrolls or learn from spellbooks. Absolute must-have for any spellcaster, of course, but also for other characters you want literacy for your barbarians, for your... Uh for your uh, for your beast fighters, for everybody, because you do not have a sp access to spells with these characters, to spell casting yourself, so you need the magic you get from uh, from from the scrolls. Some characters don't start with literacy. Actually, almost all characters who have learning lower than ten don't start with literacy, but there is one way to get it later in the game. So yeah. Uh, it's not a problem, you just you, you have to deal without those scrolls in the early game. 
And stealth is another very useful spell. Enables you to uh, avoid certain fights, to pick your fights, just fight the enemies you want to fight. But um, I've also got the feeling that you increase it uh, automatically quite well. Yeah, so much about our skills. Let's talk a, a little bit about the stats too. Strength. Let's take a look here. Here we see the for each stat you have got a current value and you've got a maximum value. The maximum value is what you can reach by training without uh, any uh, magical means, without potions to increase the, the potential. Well, strength um, is important for the damage you deal in melee combat and also for your carrying capacity. Every character wants to have that as high as possible, but you can train it by carrying heavy stuff around. If you're burdened, strained or strained plus, uh, you increase your strength up to a maximum of 18 if your potential maximum is so high. And that's an uh, important thing to do early on in most runs. You want to get that uh, strength stat up as high as you can. Learning uh, increases the benefit you get from uh, reading spell books. You get more castings out of these books. Also learning, um, if you get it to 15, 20, 25 and so on, gives you an additional skill increase per level, which is also nice. Of course, it's very important for spellcasters. You need those castings from the books because you don't want to run out of spells. Willpower lets you resist certain mental attacks Confusion is uh, the most important to talk about. There are certain situations in the game where getting confused can easily kill your character, so you want to get that up. Also, getting it to a very high value increases the range of your ball spells, which is crucial for success with a couple of caster characters. It makes those ball spells their ultimate weapon in the end, because in comparison to bold spells, Ball spells cannot be dodged. If the enemy is vulnerable to the element and if it is standing inside the range, it will always be hit. That's what makes ball spells so effective. Toughness is very important for your hit points. The higher your toughness, the higher your hit points will go, which is great all by itself. Also, if you get it really high, to 20 or higher, you get one point of protection value for each two points of toughness. So at toughness 20 or 21, you get one point protection value. 22, 23, 2 points, and so on. Charisma increases the chance to get give commands to your uh, allies, your familiars, whoever is on your side. Can be quite helpful, not that important. It has a second uh, use, which is uh, it um, gives better shop prizes for male characters. Not very useful either, so you can neglect this a little bit. Appearance gives sh better shop prizes for female characters, which is not that important, but it recently got another use. The higher your appearance, the less you get affected by corruption. And this can be very, very handy, especially if you intend to do a long run, grind a lot. The background corruption of the game will increase after a couple of days and uh, in the long term. A high appearance might really help you to um, not turn into a really mass of primal chaos. A mana, at once it gives you power points, very important for spellcasters. The other thing, mana also gives you luck. I do not know exactly how that works, but this luck is of course important for every character. Still, uh, characters who are no spellcasters could neglect this one, it's not so important. And finally, perception allows you to uh, watch rather far in the game. Very important for archers. You want to see these enemies early enough so you can shoot them. It also lets you find uh, traps, secret doors or whatever when you search for them. That's the use of these stats. What else can we see here? We've got uh, DVPV, which is defense value, protection value. Defense value increases your chance to dodge an attack. You don't get hit at all. Protection value increases your chance to, uh, no, not the chance, reduces the damage you suffer when you get hit. And as a general rule you can keep in mind, in the early game protection value is by far the most important. That's what saves you, that's what uh, saves you from the damage you suffer and lets you survive through the early game. The further you progress into the game, the more important becomes dodge value defense value. The reason is the damage the enemies da do gets higher and higher and just like you the enemies also have got a chance to land critical blows. 
And even if you've got a very high protection value, 50 points of protection value, the enemy does 50 points of damage, no problem, you can easily take it. You feel kind of uh, invincible, you stand right in front of them, you, you think you can just tank everything they do, but when they do this critical hit, they do double damage and that just bursts your hit points away like nothing. That's why in the late game, even if you've got high protection value, if those tough enemies land a critical blow, you want uh, you will suffer a lot. That's why you want defense value up high so you don't get hit at all. Hit points is clear, that's what makes you survive uh, enemy blows. Power points is what you need to cast spells. Anything else that we need to mention? Speed. Actually, speed is one of the most important stats in the game. It's a little tricky to increase, but you need speed. Uh, I think the ordinary value is 100. That's what most enemies have, what you have. That means uh, if your speed drops below 100, every action you take when you walk around, I don't think if you attack, but if, uh, definitely if you walk around, uh, you will just be, uh, you will not be as quick as your enemy. The enemy will um, will um, close the gap to you, he can attack you, you cannot outrun him, you cannot flee to a different level, which can be a big problem. On the other hand, if you get really quick, if you are quicker than your enemy, then every, every now and then. For example, imagine this blink dog has a speed of 100, you've got 110. That means every 10 turns you get an extra free attack a free turn, a uh, free movement to run away, or a free attack if you fight them even. That's excellent. That's one attack that you can get in for free where the enemy cannot deal any counter damage to you. Very, very important. Speed, though, is not the only measure of uh, mobility in the Adom. There is uh, one other thing which is energy points. I think I will switch. Um, the dynamic dis display to uh, this one. Uh, uh, last movement energy. That shows us how much en energy points the last movement cost. If we walk around with Gerion, you see it's 1000 per movement. 1000, let's go towards this blink dog. Okay, he attacks us, misses us. If we attack, we just take 943 energy points per attack. The reason is, we have already increased our access skill a little bit. And the better you get with the weapon you use, the quicker your attacks will go. And there are other means to reduce this uh, number of uh, energy points that you uh, use for each attack. And each of them is very, very valuable. There are certain classes like, like barbarians, like uh, beast fighters, who get a special class feature that uh, reduces your energy costs at all and it's so helpful, it makes you really really quick. There are certain items that reduce the energy cost per movement turn, not attack but movement. Seven league boots, talking about them, very powerful item. And uh, keeping these energy costs low is also very very helpful thing to do. Well, uh, anything else we need to go through? Items? Yeah. Like I said, uh, the most important thing in the early game is protection value. That's what keeps your characters alive. So if you get the chance to increase your protection value on a re reliable basis, I would always recommend to do so early on, especially if you do not, do not yet have a very high protection value. So if you are just wearing a robe, one point of protection value, and you find a studded leather armor, if you're experienced, you know that it gives an average of three points of protection. You want to, uh, to equip this armor right now. Even if it's cursed, the two points of protection value will really help you. If you find a chainmail right now, average of five points of protection value, I would at this very moment unequip the studded leather armor and equip the chainmail just to get the expected uh, bonus to my protection value. There are also items for the other slots which could help you each kind of metal helmet, definitely. So if you find uh, a black helmet, for example, or you find uh, also a bone helmet, a metal cap, anything like that, a crystal helmet, I would equip it right now. No matter if it's cursed, it gives uh, additional protection very reliably, take that. Girdles, it's just metal girdles that you want. 
early on. Uh, the problem with girdles is if you equip a cursed girdle, you cannot unequip your armor anymore. So you should be a little bit careful with that. If you do not yet have a good armor, it might be worth not equipping a girdle if you don't know the status or you haven't identified it. Although it's a very good girdle. If you know it's, you can uh, identify items by a weight. If they've got an unusual weight, unusually light, they might be higher metal. If you find a higher metal girdle, it might be worth equipping even a cursed one. Shields. All shields except for ordinary small shields give you a bonus to protection. And that's a very important thing. Most characters start with a one-handed weapon. For most characters it is recommended to use a one-handed weapon. So you've got your right hand free for a shield. And uh, if I find a shield early on that is not an ordinary small shield, I equip it almost always. I think it's it, it's not a small sheet at all. Many other small shields also don't have protection value. They just have got a higher defense bonus. So a wooden shield, um, ordinary uh, ordinary metal shield, or all kinds of higher medium shields, large shields, uh, or uh, tower shields. I'd always equip them. That's also uh, what uh, an important fo a point for a weapon of choice. Uh, my weapon of choice is almost always. Um, one-handed melee weapon. If I do not have, for example, like a barbarian who is very good with two-handed weapons, usually I rather go for the one-handed weapons. By the way, there is also one kind of weapon that gives you guaranteed bonus to protection, which is the rapier. The rapier gives guaranteed plus one point protection, so you could also blindly equip that. If it's cursed or not, well, it doesn't really matter. One thing you should keep in mind though, if you equip a cursed weapon or a cursed sh shield, you're not able to change your gauntlets anymore. If you do not have any good garlands yet, that might be a little bit risky. So I, I'd only take a weapon or a shield if I really know there's guaranteed bonus. If you cannot change the garlands anymore, you also have no chance anymore to change your rings. <laughs> that might be a problem too, but rings usually don't give, give you protection, except for a, a couple few that you cannot identify uh, un unless you identify the item with a um, scroll of identifier or anything like that. So rings is not that important in the early game. Bracers, same with that. Garnlets. Garnlets are a little tricky. You might try to equip some unidentified gloves. Gloves can be very good. They might could be fencing gloves or anything like that. You might also equip, blindly equip, colored garnlets. Blue garnlets, red garnlets, black garnlets. They could be dragon hide garnlets that give you an elemental resistance and two points of protection value. They could be just blue leather garnlets or red leather garnlets. They have on average one point of protection value. So if you equip these garnlets and you see your, uh, those colored garnlets and your protection goes up by one, you can be sure that is uh, a leather garnlet, no resistance. If it goes up by two, it might be uh, um, dragon hide garnlets. Never blindly equip any ordinary gauntlets though because they might be gauntlets of peace which are auto cursing and they greatly reduce the damage output you do. There are just very few cast, uh, characters which uh, should use them, maybe spellcasters who only cast spells, for them it's nice because they give a nice defense bonus. Anyway, boots, I only equip heavy boots or metal boots early on, they have got guaranteed protection points. Well, and that's more or less. Is uh, that's it, more or less. That's maybe a little lesson about the items you should wear, or when you should equip them, also without identifying them. I think that's okay. A little bit to learn for the beginning of the episode. I will now try to get us a blink dog corps. So, Gerion. Okay, the blink dog summoned a fellow blink dogs. The reason I want a blink dog corps. If you eat that one, you get teleport control, which is an intrinsic skill, which helps you a lot. You can choose where to teleport. I go to defensive tactics when killing this, uh, fighting this dog, because the blink dogs have a high chance to penetrate your armor. That's a lot of da damage. We do not want to suffer that damage, so we just go through here. Um, by the way, this was the first blink dog we attacked. You see it from the wound it still has. I will do one thing because this blink dog already started summoning his allies, so I rename him, pressing N, then on the blink dog, and I'll name him Blinky Bill. So I remember that I won't attack Blinky Bill, he has got this green star above his head now, marking him as a named blink dog, and as long as I keep him alive, I can be sure that there will be more blink dogs summoned. Otherwise, it could take a long time until we uh, get another one who, who starts summoning. 
So, more blink blocks are coming. We can kill them all, we just have to keep Blinky Bill alive. Shields increases to level 1. Excellent. Take a look here. Shields to level 1 gives us plus 2 protection value. I think from my experience, usually you have to kill around about 20 to 30 blink dogs in order to get a corpse without the food preservation, preservation skill. So, this guy is dead too. Still don't have anything, but our access skill went up. One small thing, by the way, if you use very offensive tactics like Berserk, very aggressive, aggressive, and so on, you will take longer to. No, you will not take longer. That means that uh, the chance is high that your ordinary defense value will not um, save you from an attack, so you use your shield. In very aggressive mode, the chance that you actually block an attack with your shield is the highest. So if you want to get your shield skill up, it's better to use very aggressive tactics. Just don't use berserk tactics, because that makes you not train shields at all. On the other hand, the lower you get down to defensive, very defensive, coward. That means that you will get less increases on your weapon skills. Also on your shields, but also on your weapon skills. So if you want to get your weapons up, you have to take a little risk. Okay, I would appreciate it if you would start summoning again. While we kill this fire beetle. Ah, oh, that looks nice. There is a second one. I'll wait till there are a couple more. Oh. Spellbook. We might ch check that out soon. And a scroll. Nice. Come on, summon more zombies. If they get a lucky hit in, uh, they can sicken you, which is quite annoying. Can be very dangerous. To get sick. Especially, it's very hard to get rid of sickness. Okay, I think we're almost done with this level. Let's. Retreat over here. Where is Blinky Bill? We need more Blink Dogs. Well, I'll just stand up here and uh, try to read the book. Maybe meanwhile the Blink Dogs will appear. Uh, here they come. Good. Ah, that looks fine. So, we we'll just go up here in the corridor. Scout the remaining squares that we didn't see yet. Kill this guy. By the way, double point K shows us our kills. We killed 10 Blink Dogs so far. So on average, I think if we kill 20 more, we should have our cross. I'll go up there in this room because it's the biggest. And here I'll wait for the dogs. Come on, Blink Dogs. Ah, that's Blinky Bill. You see he regenerated his hit points, so it's good that we named him. Otherwise, we would risk to kill him. I want more of you. I stay in coward mode while I run around here because I just want to avoid the hits. Oh, okay. Oh, I attack Blinky Bill. Luckily, in coward mode, you do a lot less damage. See here? You do uh, pl minus 8 to hit, minus 5 damage, but therefore you get a plus 12 bonus to defense value. Those tactic settings are really important. Against certain enemies, it is better to use offensive tactics. Against others, it is better to use defensive tactics. Especially against these blink dogs, like I said, they can penetrate the armor. That does a lot of damage. That's why I do not want them to uh, to, uh, to hit me. Okay, okay, there, there he comes. Have to retreat. I don't want to attack Blinky Bill. Okay, surround. Try to get in the corridor. Where do you go? Okay, he teleports away. As you can see, these blink dogs are able to teleport. We've seen that a couple times now. If you take a look at that blink dog with the look command L, press more, you see we get the, informa the information. They are able to summon help, they are able to teleport. All that stuff, you find it out if you, f uh, if you kill a couple of them. First, you just know what they look like, what speed they have, if you see them moving. But later on, okay, we get a Cops from that red, of course. Just a bit annoying. Okay, the red, get, the wear red gets away, so maybe we have to deal with it again later. A watery potion 
is always the same thing in each game. Some items are named randomly, you don't know what they do, but a watery potion is always a potion of water. Surprise, surprise. You might think a potion of water is nothing special, but in Adom actually water is very valuable. Especially you are able to bless water. And blessed water is holy water that has a whole couple of very, very useful uh, um, functions. Sixteen blink ducks right now. Still not too much. We're getting strained, by the way. That reduces our speed greatly. We're down at speed 88 now. Remember, we had a basic speed score of uh, oops, uh, of uh, of 100, I think. Or have we already got some of the speed talents? Yeah, we have get quick. So our basic speed score is 102, <laughs> and it's reduced by, uh, by 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 24 points just from being strained! Exclamation mark. That means very strange. Okay, we're surrounded, so we have to kill a couple of blink dogs. Ah, oh, they just dropped food. I want a corpse. Shields goes up to level 3. Nice. And level 3 is the highest we can reach at the moment because you cannot increase your shield skill higher than the defense bonus you get from the shield, which is 3 points for the wooden shield. So this is the maximum we can reach until we increase our equipment, find a better shield. around it and we reach level 8 what do we want to increase alertness we can just get seven points that's not worth athletics concentration maybe we cannot get any points in dodge that's what I said it gets harder and harder to increase dodge it was good that we already put a couple points on it I'll increase find weakness a bit first aid is not worth I'll increase literacy, that goes slowly, but I'll do it anyway. And I'll put a couple increases on healing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you always have to watch uh, for the um, skills that also give you a lot of points. If you've got a very valuable skill, but you can just increase it with 1d5, by maximum of 3 points, it's definitely, not, it's definitely not worth putting an increase on it. One blink dogs, I think. I hope we will soon get what we're looking for. What did we pick up there? That was a hand axe. Okay, I hope it was a. You don't need that hand axe. I hope it was a, a magic wand. Yeah, the wear up drops the corpse too, of course. As always, the same. If you run around, you want that blink dog corpse, you just get corpses from all the others. One thing I might mention, by the way, um, blink dogs are lawful creatures. Here you see your alignment. Our alignment, being a dark elf, are we a dark elf? I think so. Wait, wait, uh, we are a dark elf. Yeah, we are a dark elf monk. Uh, so dark elves are usually chaotic. Uh, but uh, killing blink dogs, creatures of law, is, in cha is a chaotic act. So if you do that with a neutral character or with a lawful character. There is a high chance that your alignment might drop. Maybe you drop from neutral uh, to chaotic, or from chaotic, or from lawful to neutral. And that's a bit of a problem because you start with a couple points of, uh, of piety with your starting deity. And this piety can be used for prayers. Prayers are very, very useful and a very effective means to keep your character alive. For many characters, for example, prayers are the only starting means of healing. So if you get into a very troubled situation, you have to pray. I think you do it with the underline, not the minus, but the line uh, minus at the bottom of the, of the key. Um, you can pray for health, for example. You get completely healed once if you do that. You can pray for mana if your mana is low and you need to uh, cast a spell. You can pray for, re, uh, remove it, uh, for removal of curses. If you equip a cursed item, you can pray it away. The god will take away the curse. You can do a couple of other things with uh, with prayers, which are really, really useful. So this uh, starting piety is very important. 
and if you kill the blink dogs and you drop to, to another alignment you have no piety left you cannot use the remaining piety from your old uh, deity that's why you should take care with other characters not to waste your starting piety Super lucky at the moment. We have now got uh, wait, wrong button. We have now got 33 blink dogs killed. Still waiting for the cops. Oh well. At least we could use the time to explain a couple of things. Up there is Blinky Bill. Keep him alive. the moment, uh, by the way, I'll leave a couple more blink dogs alive because I hope there are more summoners around. X is level 5, that's cool of course. If one or two more of them summon, the, the chances are great. We don't have to wait so long until we get a new big lot of blink dogs. I see a big room down there. Why don't we go there? Let's do that. Yep. Here we can run around in circles more easily. Quarter stuff, don't need that. Blinky Bill, what about summoning? All oh, these rats, I think there is a tele... Oh, we almost killed Blinky Bill. There is a teleportation trap somewhere on this level. That's the only thing how I could imagine all these uh, rats just appearing out of nowhere. Rats are not able to teleport. So we just run in circles here until Blinky Boy summons his friends. Blinky Bill. I think there are five living Blink Dogs at the mo uh, on this level at the moment. Hope it will be a lot more soon. Yeah, the negative point about Blink Dogs is they drop your alignment. The positive point is. Okay, wait, be a little careful. This guy did some damage. The positive point is they also give you a lot of experience. We are already at level 8 now. 3000 experience. Oh! Everything's full of jackals. That means there is a jackal where another of the summoning enemies. Okay, we were bleeding. Happens. However. Whenever I just run around, I switch to coward mode. I use the F keys to switch through the modes, F1 to F7, so it works rather quickly. That's the thing that I always do. Whenever I uh, just run around and I do not intend to attack anybody, I uh, press F7 to get in coward mode, get my defense up. See the difference? We've got defense 37 in coward mode. In normal mode, we've got 23. In berserk mode, we've got just 10. It means we're a lot easier to hit them. Surrounded again, lots of big dogs, that looks good. Still no cops though already although we already killed 44 of them. We're not so lucky in this respect right now. We're getting hungry also. I'd like to I think there was a large ration somewhere up there. Eat that or a uh, hearthling better see that, okay. Try to get down to that room again, we're not hungry anymore. So come on now, blink dogs. Where do these rats come from? I'll take these gloves, maybe fencing gloves, would be cool. There are also some other gloves like uh, smiting gloves, which are good for okay, that was a heavy hit. You saw they punched through the armor, did a lot of damage. Stop that. Yeah, you know, back in older versions of Adon, there was one really tough thing. Um, if you kill lots of enemies, the enemies become a tiny bit stronger every time a new one is spawned. And if you kill too many of them, it could happen that an uber enemy spawns. Uber Jekyll, for example, if you uh, fought, fought against these uh, Jekylls from the Jekyllware for too long time. But also uber Blink Dogs have been seen. And they were ridiculously strong. Luckily, in the current version, this has been uh, removed a bit. The 
don't get that strong anymore, so I don't think we are in danger of getting attacked by an Überblink dog. Okay, fuck. Come on. Uh, kill this guy first, the snake. I don't want to get poisoned. Let's see what we can do down here. Eye of Destruction can destroy your equipment, so it's important to kill that quickly. Just imagine this Eye of Destruction just it appears and destroys. Oh, we're getting damaged. Not so nice. Yeah, just imagine the Eye of Destruction just appearing and uh, destroying your armor. So I, oh, I ate a large ration just to get rid of the hungry status. We are still quite hurt. We're not so lucky, really. Uh, usually that does not take so long. Hope. Nah, we will definitely do it in this episode. I do not want to play another episode, killing big dogs. But maybe I'll leave this episode, episode like that. I'll just uh, get the big dog cops. I'll see if there will be a little more to explain. Until then, but apart from that, let's do, let's make this an educational episode. We talked a little bit about the game, which is maybe for experienced players it's not so important. I think uh, <laughs> most of you will already know what I said. But uh, for, for for players who are still new to the game, still learning the game, still learning the game, I hope there will there was a thing or two among it that uh, that might help you. I will continue uh, to. S put these pieces of information in this series so maybe I'll tell a little bit about the order of dungeons you do next time we're up at the surface or something like that so all in all you get a couple of hints that help you to, to get through these t tough times in the early game uh, that's one thing that I said in the comments and uh, that I repeat from time to time it took me several years it really took me several years until I won my first Adam game I think it was almost four years it's of course a tough game. You need a lot of knowledge. You need to know how to value, the, how to rate these situations, when to fight, when to run, what you need to fight whom. Until you have this knowledge, it is really, really tough to keep your characters alive. I picked up the saber just because sabers sell for very good money. I do not want to kill Blinky Bill. Bye bye. I've got 52 and still no corpse. That's really bad luck. Usually that goes a little quicker. I actually don't know how high the drop chances for corpses are. I don't even know if they are high enough for. Uh, equally high for each monster but um, with blink dogs I have got quite some experience because it's so so valuable so important to get uh, teleport control that I try to do that whenever I get the chance during the last years I've tried to re reduce the amount of grinding in my games I do not do a lot of stuff that I used to do back in the days I do not pacify the big room anymore I do not do lots of herb grinding if I can avoid it but um, this blink dog corpses, I still go for him. Oh, bleeding, crap. I'm getting hungry. Fuck! Holy moly! We just got a heavy hit. We're down to 16 HP, still bleeding. Okay, time to apply first aid if we can. Did it work? No, still bleeding. I think now it worked. Yep. Not bleeding anywhere. We were hungry. I think we should eat maybe a large ration. I saw how quickly that can go. Suddenly we were down at 21 HP. So let's walk around. Hope they won't hit us. That's quite a hard task getting this blink dog coughs. I'll play a little more slowly now and it Oh finally 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 So I just have to get out of that room Oh that's a doppelganger. A little bit dangerous doppelgangers can confuse us. 
And we don't want to walk around here confused. Ah, but we one-hitted it. Excellent. I'll try now to kill the blink dogs and then we'll eat the cops. Because if you eat the cops right in front of them, they will get really, really angry. So, now eat the blink dog cops. You feel very much in control. That's the message that tells you you, are not, you now have got teleport control. That's excellent. Now we can try to reach the next level. Just kill all the big dogs that will send out our way till we get there. Okay, if we could get a second cost, that would not be bad either. There are situations when two blink dog costs is a nice thing to have. You could lose your teleport control from one particular thing. I hope that won't happen, but well, if we get a corpse, I will take it and try to sell it to a shop anyway. Because after time, corpse is run away. Anyways, we reached the next level. I left the blink dogs alive. We didn't get a second corpse, but I think if I leave a couple blink dogs alive, I could always come back for another corpse as soon as we need it. So, uh, I think we just made a little progress, but at least we made nice experience. We're up to level 8 now and we got ourselves teleport control. So, I hope that uh, those veterans of you won't be too bored. I think that we can do that from time to time as a little, uh, as a little help to, the to those who are new to the game. I hope you kind of enjoyed the episode anyway and I hope to see you all again in the next episode. If there is anything unclear about what I said, feel free to ask. I always love to uh, discuss these things in the comments with a couple of other crazy roguelike maniacs that you are, otherwise you would maybe not watch this game. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, call it a day. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye everybody.